we are going to go over solutions to a set of problems that augment the practice quiz uh, number six. Um, so here are the problems the, that will be supplementing the practice quiz. We're going to select problems from 2G, number 1, 2I, YM7, 3B, 11, 12, 3C, 18, 19, 3D, 13, 17, 3E, 13, 14, 3F, 15, 3G, 5, and 9, 3H, 2, number 1, number 2 in oscillations, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 10 in gravitation. That's quite a few problems, so let's get started. So this sheet is available on the D2L website. Starting with number 1, 2G. 2G. When their center of masses are... 8 meters of 80 meters apart, the approximate value of the gravitational force between a 70 kilogram astronaut and a 70,000 kilogram space shuttle is what? So the force is capital G, 6.67 times 7 to the negative 11, times the product of the masses, 70 times 70,000, divided by the distance squared, which is 80 squared, and that comes out to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. Next problem is 2i, 1, and 7. Number 1, the mass of the moon is 7.4 times 10 to the 22 kilograms, and its mean radius is 1.75 times 10 to the 6 meters. What is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the moon? Okay, so the force, the gravitational force is uh, F is capital G, product of the masses, capital M times small m, divided by R squared, where capital M is the large object, the moon. If I want to get the acceleration of the small mass, I take the force divided by small m. Okay. That would just be this formula without the small, without the small m. It's capital G, capital M over R squared, where R is the radius, where the object is sitting. So that comes to 6.67 times 10 to the 11th, times the mass of the moon, 7.4 times 10 to the 22, divided by the radius of the moon, 1.75 times 10 to the 6 meters squared, and that comes to 1.61 meters per second squared. The next problem is number 7, and test 2i. Sputnik 1 had a mass of 83.6 kilograms and was in a low Earth, Earth elliptical orbit. The closest point of its orbit was 6.60 times 10 to the 6 meter, meters, and its farthest point was 7.83 times 10 to the 6 meters from the center of the Earth. What was the change in the potential energy moving from the farthest point to the nearest point? So far, the farthest point to the nearest point. Okay, so... Uh, the final minus the initial, so we're going to start off with the near point, u, so first of all, delta u is u final minus u initial, the final is the near point, so we have to just keep track when you see the change, it's final minus initial, so the near minus the final, I'm sorry, near minus the, the far point. So we have the near is minus, so the formula for the potential under is minus g product of the masses over the distance, so we have minus g mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by the distance, and that's near distance, and then we have minus the potential energy for the far distance. Plug in the numbers, g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, and the is um, it's given in the, on this test in the beginning. Uh, mass of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the Sorry, mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the mass of the satellite is 83.6 kilograms. And these are the distances, near and far. And we get a difference of minus 7.9 times 10 to the 8th joules. Okay, carrying on. Our next problems are 3B, 11, and 12.
Okay, here we have to read a, a graph of a wave. Sorry, not, not a wave, of an oscillation. Okay, the next two questions apply to the following scenario. The plot below shows the position of a mass on a, on a spring as a function of time. The spring constant is 130 newtons per meter. Answer the following questions by reading the pertinent data from the plot. So you should be able to understand this plot. So it goes from, so this is centimeters, this is seconds. It goes from 10 centimeters down to negative 10, up to 10, back down. Okay, so the amplitude is clearly 10 centimeters or 0 0.10 meters. So if I write it as a function, y is equal to 0 0.10 times meters times, this is a cosine function. It starts from the peak and it goes down like this, cosine. Okay, so how can I calculate omega? So it's cos a cosine omega t. So it has the form cosine omega t. Okay. And how do I get this omega? Well, I look what the period is. So here's where it repeats. I just take two points that are the same. Okay, I can take these two points which are the same. Notice these two points are not the same. This is going down where this is going up. Okay. And this time is 0.4 seconds, so that's the period. Then the frequency is 1 over t, that comes, comes up 2.5. And then omega is 2 pi times the frequency, so 6.28 times 2.5 comes out to 15.7 radians per second. And so that's where it goes in here, 15.7 uh, t. All right, so now they want to know what is the maximum speed of the mass. So the maximum value of the speed is a times omega. That comes from the fact that when I write v of x is equal to minus a omega times the sine of omega t. And so the biggest value that vx can have, uh, the biggest magnitude that vx can have is a times omega. And so a is 0.1, omega is 15.7, so we get 1.57 meters per second. Okay, the next one says number 12. What is the total mechanical energy of the system? So the mechanical energy of the system is the same at all times. There's a formula here that's not on the equation sheet, but I, I actually suggest you remember it. It's 1 half k a squared. And this comes about from the fact that, um, that the mechanical energy Total mechanical energy is equal to one half mv squared plus one half k x squared. This is kinetic. This is potential for a spring. And when x is equal to a, what has happened is here's your spring. And if you've stretched it to its maximum value, x is equal to a, you pull it to as far as it can go, and then this guy here, the speed will be zero. It's momentarily at its at its peak, so it's about to turn around. And this guy has then x is equal to a, so the total mechanical energy is one half k a squared. So that's how you remember it. At the maximum stretch, from the relaxed position to the maximum, the velocity is zero, so all the energy is the potential energy, which is one half k a squared. In general, though, it's somewhere in the middle here. Um, it will have both kinetic energy and potential energy. You just do one half mv squared for kinetic energy, one half kx squared for potential energy, but the sum will end up being one half ka squared. So using one half ka squared, we have k, the spring constant, all right, um, is we are told it's up here 130 newtons per meter. So one half 130 times a, which is 0.1. Uh, 0.1 here, okay, 0.1 squared, comes out to 0.65 joules. Let's go on. Next we have test 3C, 18 and 19. When a particular mass is hung from a string and swung with an amplitude of theta equals 5 degrees, it swings with a period of t. If it is instead swung with twice the amplitude, theta equals 10 degrees, what will its period be? You may assume it is a simple pendulum. Okay, the pendulum period is t is equal to 2 pi squared to L over g. 
Okay. So uh, maybe you don't know uh, that this formula is maybe not directly on the equation G, but you should know that the period, the angular frequency for a pendulum is square root of G over L, and the period is two pi over omega, and so this comes up to pi square root of you flip it around L over G. And notice that it's independent of the amplitude, so it will still be t. It doesn't change. Next question, uh, 18. A 2 kilogram mass is connected to a horizontal spring, as shown. The mass slides on a frictional surface. The spring has a con spring constant of 280 newtons per meters. If the mass is stretched 0.15 meters from equilibrium and release, what is the maximum velocity of the mass as it oscillates back and forth? Okay, omega, we can get that very quickly as the square root of k over m for a mass on a spring. Omega, uh, k is 280, and uh, the mass is 2, so 280 over 2, square root that is 11.8. And now vx is minus a omega sine of omega t, that's on the equation sheet. The maximum possible value, possible value for vx is a times omega. a is equal to 0.15, omega is equal to 11.8, and so that comes up to 1.77 meters per second. Let's go on. Next problem is uh, 13D, uh, sorry, 3D, 13, and 17. Three D thirteen and seventeen. So this is three D. Okay, a period. The period of a simple pendulum is measured to be t on the surface of the Earth. If the same pendulum is set in motion on another planet where the gravitational acceleration is five g. Its period would be what? Okay, so we have to write the period for Earth is two pi square root of l over g. That's what we just said before. The period for the planet will be 2 pi square root of L over G for the planet. But G for the planet is 5G. Okay, so now let's write this new period in terms of the period for the Earth. We compare the two, there's only a square root of 5 in the denominator, so 1 over square root of 5 times the period on Earth. So that's 1 over square root of 5 is 0.45 about. So that's the 0.45 times the period on the Earth. Let's go on to number 17. Seventeen here. Okay, this is very similar to the problem we just did uh, two problems ago. Okay, so uh, plot is shown bef below shows position of the mass, the function of time. If the spring constant is one hundred twenty newtons per meters, what is the mechanical energy system? First, we read off the amplitude. It's ten centimeters, so it's point one is the amplitude, and the uh, energy is one half. Total energy is one half k a squared. So k is 120, a is 0.1, so 1 half, 120 times 0.1 squared, that comes up to 0.6 joules. Next problem, uh, 3E, 13, and 14. All right. Uh, a 37 kilogram mass is attached to a vertical spring that is stretch and release. It oscillates up and down with a period of 1.8 seconds and it has a maximum speed as it passes through equilibrium of 2.7 uh, meters per second. Okay, uh, so what is the force constant of the spring? Alright, so they tell us that the period is 1.8, so 1.8 seconds with capital T. The frequency is 1 over 1.8, or 0.556. Angular frequency is 2 pi times the frequency, that's 3.49 radians per second. Now we can get the information about the spring constant, so that's kind of, uh, you, we, you should, uh, they call it the force constant, but the standard terminology is spring constant. So omega is equal to square root of k over m, so omega squared is k over m. We're going to solve for k, k is m omega squared. So that will be equal to the mass, 37 times omega squared, 
3.49 squared, and that comes up to 451. Okay. All right, so now the next uh, question they ask is, what is the total mechanical energy of this uh, mass spring mass system? Okay, now we have to think a little bit. So we know for the total mechanical energy, we have a... Uh, we actually have two ways to do it, this problem. So let me actually do it the faster method because this, this shows a little variety in the way of doing it. So the information they give us is that when it passes through equilibrium, the speed is 2.7 meters per second. At equilibrium, there is no potential energy. So the total energy is just the kinetic energy. That's 1 half mv squared. Okay, That turns out to be the the maximum speed when it passes through zero, x equals to zero. So we get one half the mass, 37, times the speed, to maximum speed, 2.7 squared. That comes out to 135 joules. If we want to do it uh, using uh, one half kA squared, we have to first figure out what A is. So the maximum speed is omega times A. A then is equal to the maximum speed, which is 2.7, divided by omega, which is 3.49. So we get 0.774. Then we can use 1 half kA squared, that comes to 1 half 451 was the spring constant. Okay, we calculate that up here, times 0.774 is A squared, and that comes to 135 joules. Okay. So you can do it either way. Let's go on. Number three, uh, number, uh, test 3F, number 15. Okay, the position versus time plot shows the displacement of the, ten, of the two kilogram mass on a spring. What is the spring constant A? Okay, let's first read the period. So this distance, uh, this, this time is from the repeated points, uh, from the point to its first repetition is 0.4 seconds. Okay, I could measure from here to there as well. So, um, but I get 0.4 seconds for the period. So omega is 2 pi over capital T, the period. So the omega is 15.7. And now we know that omega is equal to the square root of k over m. Omega squared is equal to k over m. Solving for k gives m omega squared. m is 2. Omega is 15.7. So 2 times 15.7 squared is 493 newtons per meter. So on. Next problems are 5, 9 from test 3G. Okay, a mass is oscillating uh, in a simple harmonic motion, in simple harmonic motion with position x of t given by 0 0.05 times sine of 100 pi times t, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. The frequency of this motion is what? Okay, so you're supposed to recognize the thing inside of the sine function is omega t. Even, okay, so even though we usually write cosine of omega t, just realize the thing inside is omega t. And so we can just read off that omega is 100 t. So f is equal to omega over 2 pi, so that comes out to 50. It's 100 pi divided by 2 pi is 50, and 50 hertz. Next one is number 9. A simple pendulum has a period of 1.35 on Earth, where g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. On Mars, where g is equal to 3.63, the same pendulum will have a period of what? Okay, so for Earth, uh, for Earth, the, the period is 2 pi squared of L over g for Earth. You can go through the steps and write it 2 pi over omega, and that's 2 pi squared of L over g. Okay, so the straightforward way to do this problem is to then just calculate what, what L is. That's kind of a slow way of doing this, but let's, let's, let's do it. Okay, so we have 1.35 is the period on Earth. That's equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over 9.8. So we can divide by 2, 2 pi, square both sides. You end up with L equals 0.45 meters. 
And then now you can calculate the period on Mars. It's 2 pi squared of L divided by G for Mars. And you get 2 pi squared of 0.45 over 2.63, you get 2.2 seconds. Okay, this was kind of an ugly way of doing it. Another way we can do it is we can say, okay, let's try to do this a little bit simpler way. Right? We have t squared, the square root of L g earth, and we can say t Mars is 2 pi square root of L g Mars. Okay, we know the period on Earth, and we want it in Mars. So what I'll do is I'll say, let's solve for t Mars for t Earth. Be capitalizing here, yeah. and so that would be t two pi square root l g for Mars divided by two pi square root l g for Earth. Okay, everything cancels except we have this in the denominator of the denominator, so that's in the numerator, and then we have this in the denominator g Mars. So the ratio comes out to. Um, square root of that on Earth, 9.8. Okay, square root of that on Mars, 2.63. And then you pull out your calculator. And you punch in the numbers. 9.8 divided by square root of 2.63. Oops, square root of 9.8 divided by 2.63 inside the Square root, and we get 1.64. And so that means the period in Mars is 1.64 times the period on Earth. And so the period on Earth was uh, 1.35, 1.35 seconds. And so we get 2.2 uh, seconds for the period on Mars, which is the same as what we got. Okay, let's go on. 3H. Uh, 3H number 2. A 3 kilogram block attached to a spring executes simple harmonic motion according to x is equal to 2 times cosine 50 t where x is in meters and t is in seconds. The spring constant of the spring is what? Okay, x is equal to a cos omega t. We can just read off that omega is 50, just reading here. And so now we have omega squared with k over m. So omega squared is k over m. So k is m omega squared. So m is 3 kilograms. Uh, we said omega is equal to 50, so 50 squared. 3 times 50 squared, squared excuse me, is 7,500 meters per meter. Next, we go to oscillations, number one and number two. Okay, we have a mass is oscillating on a spring. X is equal to x of t is equal to 0 0.1 times cosine of four pi t, where time is measured in seconds. What is the amplitude of the oscillation? What is the frequency? What is the frequency? What is the period? Okay, so x is equal to 0.1 times cosine 4 pi t, and that's a that's cos times cosine omega t. First, the amplitude. That's just the thing out in front, so that's 0.1 meters. Next, they want the fre angular frequency. That's omega. That's the thing that's multiplying t inside of the cosine function. So that's 4 pi. Okay, 4 pi is equal to 2.12.6 radians per second. Then we want the frequency, that's omega divided by 2 pi, so that's 4 pi divided by 2 pi, that's 2, so 2 hertz. Then we want the period, so the period is 1 over the frequency, that's 1 over 2, that's 0.5. And then the next few parts ask, but let's say if the mass is 1 kilogram, what is the spring constant, what's the total mechanical energy, 
What is the velocity at 0.25 seconds? What is the kinetic energy at 0.25 seconds? What is the potential energy at 0.25 seconds? And if the mass is now doubled, what is the period, new period of the oscillations? Okay, keeping the same spring constant. Okay, let's go through each of those. So let's first uh, figure out the first one was spring constant. So we have omega is the square root of k over m, square both sides, omega squared equals k over m. So k is m omega squared, m is 1.0, omega is 12.6 radians per second. So you square that, you get 159 radians per meters. Total mechanical energy, this is a good formula to remember, is just 1 half ka squared. So we have k, the spring constant is 159, so we have 1 half 159 times the amplitude, which is 0.1. So we have 0.1 squared. Multiply these, you get 0.795 joules. Now, the next thing we're being asked is, what is the velocity at t equals to 0.25 seconds? So we have the velocity in the x component of the velocity is minus omega a sine omega t. This is on your equation sheet. So now you stick in t equals to 0.25 seconds. Omega is 12.6, a is 0.1. Don't forget the minus sign. We take the sine of 4 pi times t, which is 0.25, and that comes up to pi. The sine of pi is equal to 0, so the whole thing is 0. Next question. What is the kinetic energy at t equals 0.25 seconds? Well, the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, so v, since v is 0, kinetic energy is 0. The next part, part i is what is the potential energy at 0.25 seconds? Okay, so the potential energy is 1 half k x squared. So we have 1 half k, so x is equal to a cosine omega t. So we have a squared cosine squared of omega t. We stick in 0.25 seconds for t. So we have 4 pi times 2.5, that comes up to pi. Cosine of pi is minus 1. Cosine, of, uh, cosine squared of pi is 1. So we have, and a was 0.1, so we have 1 half times 159 times 0.1 squared times 1, that comes out to 0.795 joules. Okay, now they ask if the mass is now double, what is the new period of oscillations? Okay, so the formula for the period is period is 1 over f or 2 pi over omega, that comes out to 2 pi squared with m divided by k. So for the new case, we have, we keep the same spring constant, but we have a new mass of 2m. So we have 2 pi squared with 2m over k. So that's going to be, this extra 2 here will give me a factor of square root of 2 times the old period. So that the old one was, was uh, what we call t. So if you want, you can say old, new, here. Square root of 2 times the old period, which is 0.5 seconds. And so this comes out to 0 0.707 seconds. Next problem, a simple pendulum is oscillating with angle theta of t is equal to 0.3 radians times cosine 10 of 10 t, where the time t is measured in seconds. We want to know the amplitude, we want the angle frequency, frequency oscillations, period of the oscillations, length of the pendulum, if the mass of the at the end of the pendulum is now doubled, what is new period of the oscillations? So, we have theta t, the angle for the pendulum is 0.3 radians times cosine of 10 t. So this is a times cosine of omega t. Okay, so this amplitude here is just this coefficient in front. Don't get confused by the fact that for the pendulum, the displacement is measured in terms of angles. Um, so that's not the same as, as this thing here, okay? The amplitude is this coefficient on front. It's 0.3 radians. Now, if you want omega, that's just reading off this here. So that's 10 radians per second. The frequency is omega divided by 2 pi, so it's 1.59 hertz. So the period is 1 over frequency, 1 over 1.59, 0.628 seconds. To get the um, length, we use the fact that the omega for a simple pendulum squared root of small g over L. So omega squared is g over small g over L. L then is equal to g over omega squared. And that's 9.8 divided by 10 squared, because 10 is the 
angular frequency, and it comes out to 0 0.098 meters. Now, now they ask, what is, if the mass of the pendulum is now doubled, what is the new period of oscillation? So remember, it changed the period for the spring, but the mass of the pendulum really uh, does not appear in the formula for the period. Okay, so it's, well, okay, let's look at the formula for the uh, angular frequency. The, ang angular, the formula for the period is 2 pi over omega, so that will be 2 pi square root of L over G. So there's no mass in this problem. So period remains the same, which was 0.628. All right, so let's go on. Next problem, we go to gravitation. Number 4, 5, 7, 10, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 10. Start off with number 4. The minimum speed required for a rocket to escape from the surface of the Earth. So this is the escape. This is on the equation sheet. It's just going to be the square root of 2 g mass of the Earth, r radius of the Earth. So square root of 2 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, raised to the 6.37 times 10 to the 6. All these things will be given. They're on the equation sheets, uh, or given in the problem. And so, punch this in your calculator, you get 11,200 meters per second. Next problem, we have number five. The speed of a satellite making a circular orbit around the Earth at an altitude of 12,000 kilometers. Okay, so we're given an altitude. The formula for the circular orbit, this is also given in the equation sheet, the speed of a satellite in a circular orbit, square root of G, capital G times capital M, the mass of the Earth, divided by the radius, uh, at uh, the distance from the center of the Earth to where the satellite is. But since they give us only the altitude, 12,000 kilometers, so we at first convert the altitude meters, so that'll be 12,000 times 10 to the third, but then we have to add in the radius of the Earth. So in other words, we have the radius of the Earth here, but then we have this extra distance, the altitude. So we have to add the radius of the Earth plus the altitude together. So Re plus H goes in here. Okay. G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. Take the square root of this guy. You get 4,660 meters per second. Let's now go on to problem number seven. The gravitational potential energy for the Earth plus Moon system. So these numbers, by the way, uh, the, the values are all given here with the mass of the Earth, mass of the Moon. Okay. We want the potential energy. The formula is minus u is equal to minus g mass of the Earth mass of the Moon multiplied together divided by the distance between them r. So we have minus 6.67 times 10 to the 11 mass of the Earth 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times the mass of the Moon that's also given 7.36 times 10 to the 22, and then we divide by the distance between them uh, 3.80 times 10 to the 8. And we put into the calculator, we get negative 7.73 times 10 to the 28 joules. The last two problems are number 9 and number 10. Number 9, we actually did, uh, we actually did that problem in, uh, in class on Tuesday with the quicker questions. So let's just go over that. Number nine, right here. Okay, a the mass is initially at rest, a distance twenty thousand kilometers from the center of the Earth. What is its speed when it is ten thousand kilometers from the center of Earth? Okay, so we have the conservation of energy. Okay, so we have k initial plus u initial is equal to k final plus u final. 
it's kinetic energy, potential energy initial. Kinetic energy, potential energy final. Okay, so we have one half mvi squared, but the uh, sort of the mass starts from rest, the mass starts from rest, so the initial velocity is zero, so the kinetic energy is zero. Then we have the potential energy is minus capital G times capital M times small m, divided by the distance between them, ri, initially. And then we have the final kinetic energy, which is one half mv final squared. And then we have the potential energy in, uh, for the final case, that's minus capital G times capital M times small m, divided by the, the uh, distance between them in the final case, which is our final. And notice that m appears everywhere, so we can just remove uh, the m, small m, that is, see, m just can be removed like this. And so we have minus g times capital M divided by ri is equal to one half v final squared minus g capital M r final. Then we have to plug in the values of things we know. So g is 6.67 times 10 to the 11th. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. That's given. Put that in here as well with, on the side. The initial distance is 20,000 kilometers, but we have to multiply by it. 10 to the third to convert to meters. The final distance is 10,000 times 10 to the third, again, converting to meters. So we get one half the final squared is this guy plus this term bringing to the other side, top of minus sign. And that comes out to 1.99 times 10 to the seventh. So multiply by two, we get the final squared is 3.99 times 10 to the seventh. And taking the square root, we get 6,320 meters per second. Now for the very final problem, we have a rocket is launched with a speed of 3,000 meters per second from the Earth's surface. How far in altitude above the Earth's surface will it rise before it turns around and falls back down to Earth? Again, this is a conservation of energy problem. K initial plus U initial is equal to K final plus U final. So we have 1 F M V initial squared plus minus G capital M times M divided by R initial is equal to 1 half M V final squared plus minus G capital M small m over R final. So we can again remove all the M, small m's, divide through the matter. Oops, this guy should have been gone. Sure, this is gone. This is the hazard that has been corrected online, but not in my written notes here. Okay. And so we have one half, uh, the initial speed is 3000 squared, and then we have capital G 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, Mert mass of the is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. Put that in here, put that in there as well for these two guys. And then the initial. Uh, R is going to be the radius of this, which is 6.37 uh, times 10 to the 6 meters. R final is what we want to find. Um, we're going to have to subtract out the radius of the Earth to get the altitude, but we'll do that later. This side comes out to 5, negative 5.81 times 10 to the 7. Um, and this side comes, in the, denom in the numerator, becomes negative 3.99 times 10 to the 14 divided by R final. Now we can cross multiply and divide by negative uh, 5.81 times 10 to the 7th and get our final 6.87 times 10 to the 6 meters. But we want to know the altitude. So the altitude, we have some R in the R E, and then we have some altitude. Actually, the altitude is much smaller than R E, but you can see uh, just the schematic sketch here. So the altitude is, is the final radius from here to there, minus the uh, radius. Oh, sorry, you couldn't even see that. So the altitude is the distance all the way across here. That's our final from here all the way. But if we want to get the altitude, we have to subtract off the radius of the Earth, this distance here. So we have 6.87 times 10 to the 6th 
minus the radius of the air, 6.27 times 10 to the 6, comes out to 0 0.50 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay. All right. Um, that's all we have to cover. Uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a good day.